Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. In this video, we are going to go over um, probably the last topic for this entire unit, and it's called rotational momentum. All right, let's get my pen out. Rotational momentum. All right, now, like what we did before uh, with our momentum unit, uh, we're going to approach it uh, in a multitude of different ways. So we're going to approach it from the conservation method, uh, and then we're going to go straight in into the um, the variable method, and we're just going to see how everything really links together. All right, so first things first, let's go over the big idea, and uh, we're going to call that big idea the conservation of momentum. All right, so the conservation of momentum states that the initial momentum of a object is equal to the final momentum of an object, or the initial momentum of a system is equal to the final momentum of a system. And that's big. This is the big idea for this, uh, to really understanding this entire um, topic for this, for this unit. Now, the same is true uh, for anything that is rotational momentum. Now, before we go into the variables for rotational momentum, there's also this caveat, right? So an object in motion stays in motion, an object at rest stays at rest unless there is a outside force. Okay, unless there is there is an outside force. Now, when we were talking about linear momentum, that outside force uh, that changes the momentum, uh, it was called impulse. Okay, so if there was a impulse acting on the system, that means your momentum changes. So uh, if impulse, then P initial does not equal to P final. And that was the big idea um, behind the momentum unit. So the same ideas hold true for the rotational momentum. So the conservation of rotational momentum. All right, so before we begin, Let's go over a couple of the variables. The variable for rotational momentum um, is L. Okay. The variable for linear momentum, if you remember, it was P. So uh, we'll start off with the linear momentum equation first. We say P is equal to m times v, right? Mass times velocity, an object that moves. And therefore, from there, we can uh, translate the rotational uh, version from the translational version or the linear version. So instead of saying m, we can say i for rotational momentum, and v, we can say that's omega. All right? Now there is one other form of uh, this equation, um, but that'll be for a different video. All right, so we have L is equal to i omega. And so we can say the conservation of momentum is L initial is equal to L final. Um, and we can break this down to say that i omega initial is equal to i omega final. Um, and we can say that's I initial and I final as well. So that's the conservation of rotational momentum. And the only way, the only way that this can change, so this is one of those uh, starry moments, right, is unless there is a outside, now, for translational momentum, we said there was a outside force, but because now we're rotating, we're not gonna say force, but rather we're gonna say torque. Okay, so if you have a outside torque, that means the momentum can change. So what that means, um, we're gonna we're gonna go over this idea here first, um, and then we're gonna go over uh, the different um, scenarios that you might come across, unless there's an outside force. So what this means is, if you have a spinning disc or like a like a top, right? So we have an object and it's and it's rotating, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. So that's an arrow right there okay so it's rotating with omega this object that is spinning it'll continue to spin forever infinite it'll just keep on spinning uh, and the only way that you can change its rotation is if there is an outside torque so like if um, I don't know, like just like force or friction involved or if you like gently touch the top uh, you are you know creating an outside torque and, um, so that's where this idea comes in and that is a giant major idea but before we do that, let's go over um, the different scenarios that you might come across, okay? Um, now, for these different scenarios, uh, these are basically what we know um, in, like, these are real-life scenarios that you can come across, uh, and it's actually something that you can actually do at home if you have, like, a, a rotating chair, okay? So, if we take a look at the equation for momentum, we see that there is I 
and omega. Now this is the equation for rotational uh, momentum. Now I'm going to do a different version of this equation and this different version is not a real equation but this equation is simply there so that you can understand the concepts behind what we're trying to discuss. So instead of saying I we can say m r squared right because that is the the uh, the two variables that make up rotational inertia okay so with this version we're going to mess around with the different variables to really see exactly what's happening okay and if you have a spinning chair you could also do this as well so what you can do uh, if you're in a spinning chair if you rotate around and around and you have your arms out okay when you have your arms out you have a great big R and if you pull your arms in uh, what that'll do is you're changing your R Okay, and I'll do a quick little sketch uh, in case you don't have a spinning chair. So let's say that this is going to be, let's see if I can do my, this is my chair, right? And then we have, uh, this is my person, this is my torso, and this is my head, All right? And then we have a arm, All right? So we have our arms and this is my, my legs, okay? So this person is spinning around and around and around and around and around, okay? And you could try this once again if you have the, uh, the spinning chair. So here, what we're looking at is m r squared omega. Now, as you're spinning around and around and around, and if you pull your arms in like so, okay, so I'll do a quick little sketch there. So let me draw the person first. So if I want to draw my, my arms in, yay, right? I'm holding my arms close like that, and these are my legs for my spinny chair, okay? All right, so once that happens, if we take a look at this, okay, we can see exactly what would happen to you if you were to do this in real life. So if from point A right there to point B right here, okay, so the distance between the two, that is my arm. If I bring my arms in, what I effectively did is I reduced my radius, okay? I reduce my radius. My mass distribution, that didn't change. So this is equal. Okay, so this one didn't change, this went down. So the only way that we can keep this whole ratio the same is if R goes down, then your omega has to go up. And so what will happen is if you have your arms out and you're spinning around and you bring your arms in, what you'll find is you'll actually rotate faster. You'll start to uh, pick up your velocity. Now, uh, what this shows us is how the rotational momentum equation, it really works so, so well with each other. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful little uh, physics thing that our universe does. And so a couple of things. One, you have to ask yourself, was there an outside force? Okay, did something come along and make the person spin faster, right? Like did, did someone come along and push the, the chair or help spin the chair? And the answer is no, no one did that, right? The, like you and your chair, you're the one that brought your arm in. So there was no outside force. There was no outside torque, okay? Because there were no outside torques, uh, it's a new emitter. Um, your momentum must be conserved. So your momentum initial and your momentum final must be conserved. And this is a big, big, big idea here. So we can say that L initial is equal to L final. And we know this because uh, I omega is equal to I omega final, right? So from here, we can say that when you brought your arms in, you spun faster. So I'm going to say this went up. Okay. And in order for you to spin faster, your rotational inertia went down. And that's because you reduced your radius. Okay, you were able to be able to spin faster. And so this, um, this relationship, this inverse relationship, makes it so that if your omega goes up, your uh, inertia has to go down. And that is truth because we have to keep the rotational momentum the same. And that's because there were no outside forces. Now we see this all the time, all the time in sports. Um, so for example, so the big idea here is uh, if, uh, let's see, if I goes up, omega goes down, right? We could do the inverse. If I goes down, omega goes up. And that's a inverse relationship. Okay. Uh, and we see this so many times in sports. This is a inverse relationship. All right, and we can break this down even more. Uh, the reasoning behind the changing in the eye is because the radius changes. So for example, uh, if um, there's a sport called shot put, 
right? So with the shot put, um, what happens is you you have a very heavy uh, shot put, right? The the object called the shot put, and you put it really close to your head, right? And then you swing your body around and around. So when you're swinging your body around and around. Uh, so this is like an aerial view. So this is the person's head and that's like the little shot put and they are like rotating. Okay, they're rotating around in a circle. So as they're rotating around in a circle, um, they try to keep the radius radius low. And they want to keep the radius small because that means your rotational inertia is small. If your rotational inertia is small, that means your omega is big. So that means you can spin around faster and faster and faster. Okay, remember, it's the inverse relationship. And at the last second, after you rotated yourself around, you extend out your arm, right? So that part is very, very important. So you extend out your arm, right? So uh, this is a aerial view, right? You extend out your arm and you release the shot put. Okay, so when you do that, what happens is that your rotational inertia increases. So when your rotational inertia increases, that is because your radius increases. Okay. And when that happens, we want that to happen, not only so that we can release our shot put, but so that we can stop spinning, right? So if your initial or your inertia goes up, it's because your radius went up. And if these two go up, that means your rotational velocity has to decrease. And that is just simply because your uh, it's that inverse relationship. And we want that because you want to stop spinning, right? And this holds true for like, um, divers right uh, so if you are a Olympic diver right so we have like the diving board and if you do that uh, I don't know what this dive is called but you you bounce on the diving board and you uh, jump in the air and then you turn yourself into a tiny little ball right you tuck yourself in you tuck yourself in and you're spinning you're rotating you're you're spinning so fast, right? And you, and you rotate, 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 and at the last second, you, uh, you kick out your legs and you extend out your arm right as you're about to hit the water. So look here, right? So here, our radius is super small. And because our radius is super small, the diver is able to spin in the air really, really, really fast. And right before you hit the water, you don't want to be spinning, right? You want to go ahead, you want to just go straight into the water like an arrow. They extend out your arms and they extend out their legs like from that tucked in position. And when your radius increases, you stop spinning because your velocity, your rotational velocity, it sharply decreases, right? And so we have this really cool effect um, where the momentum is conserved and we're just able to manipulate the, the body's radius in order to change how much you, you spin. Okay, um, one last final example that I want to go over um, is if you are, like, if you watch figure skating or if you're a dancer yourself, uh, you can do like different like pirouettes, right? And you can just spin around and around and around. Um, and it's kind of like when you're sitting in a chair, right? So when you're spinning around and around and you have your, your arms out, right? I think when they do pirouette, they, they have their arms here or you could have your arms there. Um, but I'm just going to do a very basic sketch. Um, so this is, this is the torso of my dancer and this is their, their bottom leg. And then sometimes they have like their, this is like their bent knee. Right, and so their knee is like resting on their other leg, and they they have their arms out like this, and they're like rotating around. So they kind of look like a top, basically. Um, and when when they're spinning around and around and around like this, um, sometimes they will lower their knee. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best here. So that's my my hip. And sometimes they will lower their knee, and when you lower your knee like that, right, and sometimes they go from a arms out position and they'll put their arms, arms ab above their heads like this, right? So those are the arms. Um, when this happens, right? So look what happened here. This is the rotating radius, right? This is our rotating radius. Uh, so what happens is that your radius decreases and when your radius decreases, your rotational inertia decreases and therefore your uh, velocity, right? That's the relationship we're looking for. Your velocity increases. And so you're able to spin faster and faster and faster. And um, it's a really cool effect.
And but the big idea here is that momentum is always conserved because there are no outside torques. There is nothing that is causing a person to spin faster or slower in these scenarios. Now, in reality, especially with like the the, the dancer, right? Because their feet are on the floor, we know that there's a force of friction. And because there's that force of friction, that force of friction causes a a negative torque, right? It uh, reduces the the omega, right? It slows people down. And so that's why the dancers have this technique. And with this technique, um, they even though they're slowing down, if they were to reduce their radii, they can pick up that speed again, okay? So a lot of really cool things with this rotational momentum. Um, but the big idea is uh, the relationship between I and omega um, and exactly what it means for us in terms of momentum, all right? Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, other than the equation itself, um, right here, I'm going to highlight this, and then you should definitely highlight this here, um, right there, okay, unless there's a outside torque, very important, uh, because that's probably how they're going to question you on the AP exam. All right, um, now with this out of the way, in the next video, uh, we're going to take this idea of rotation momentum a step further, um, with a little bit more of a complicated uh, set of problems. Uh, but until then, this was Mr. Lee, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.